How's it going, fellow reefers? As always, God bless you and thank you for being here. I'm Gage and this is Candy Coral Aquatics. If you're new to my channel, please think about subscribing and hitting that notification bell because this is where I talk about all things reefing, but more importantly, where I share the information I've gathered on my tank with you guys to help you become better hobbyists at this hobby we call reefing. Today, I want to discuss bioload and filtration. So our filtration in regards to our bioload. So I think one of the more challenging things in this hobby, especially when you're new, is controlling your nutrient level. Being able to export those nutrients in an effective manner that's going to provide good coral growth, coloration, and stability of your reef tank. So that's what we're going to kind of talk about today. So what are the big areas that we should be looking at when it comes to filtration? So this is really going to depend on what all you're trying to do in your tank and how heavily stocked your tank is. Some tanks can get away with very minimal attention and equipment if they're very low stocked. While as other tanks that are overstocked, they're probably going to need a lot more attention and filtration. So what are we talking about when it comes to stocking? So I don't want you guys to be confused and think that because you have a lot of coral, you have to be doing a lot of water changes. That's not always the case. So primarily what's going to be causing new nutrients. Uh, number one is going to be the fish that we have in the tank. So they're the biggest producers of nutrients. Your coral, I'm sure, produces some sort of nutrients, you know, some sort of waste, but it's very, very minuscule. It probably doesn't even compare to the amount that they're actually absorbing from the water to help themselves grow. So the biggest thing that's actually going to be dirtying our tank is our fish. And then the second biggest thing is going to be the food that we're putting in the tank for our fish. Because let's be honest, I'm willing to bet Everybody out there has a heavy hand when it comes to feeding. I know I do sometimes too, because it's very enjoyable to see all your fish come out and, and you know, they're just sitting there, they're ready. It's like they're begging. They know they're gonna get fed. And we have enjoyment from feeding our fish because we know that they're happy when we do that. But we have to remember to kind of cut back and not overfeed because that's where a lot of these problems come from to begin with. So if you have a tank that is not heavily stocked with fish, you can probably get away with a little bit more laxed maintenance schedule. However, what are some of the big things that you should be doing in regards to reducing the nutrients, reducing that bio load and giving you the, you know, the happiest, healthiest tank that you can? I think the first thing at the top of everybody's list should be water changes. Number one, water changes are easy. They're affordable. You guys have heard me talk about them before. When you're using a good high quality salt, there's really nothing better. If we look at a water change as a whole, what is it that we're really doing here? Well, as pollution in the tank builds up, and when I say pollution, I'm meaning the nutrients, the breakdown of wastes that create nitrates and phosphates. When this stuff breaks down, what do you think is the most effective way of actually removing it, not just minimizing it? It's going to be a water change. Because if we have 100% nutrients in the tank and we do a 50% water change, effectively, theoretically, we're removing 50% of those nutrients right off the bat instantaneously, and we're replacing it with healthy, fresh water. So water changes are always going to be at the top of the list in the arsenal of defeating high nutrients and actually getting rid of that huge bio load that some of us actually have in our tank. The next thing that should be running, and in my opinion, should be running 24 seven is a protein skimmer. Now it is possible to over skim your, your aquarium, and it is possible to do too many water changes, leaving the tank too clean. However, if you have a good number of fish within the system, it's pretty unlikely that you'll ever actually hit that point. Fish produce a lot of waste as well as the food that we add to the tank. So it's pretty unlikely that you're ever actually going to over skim or do too many water changes. However, for those of you that, out, that are out there that either have a small or a large tank and have maybe only a couple of fish in it, just bear this in mind. You know, don't do too many water changes, kind of balance it out uh, with what you have in your tank. Now for me, I've got a 60 gallon tank and I currently have seven fish in here. So my tank is pretty heavily stocked. So somebody like me, I'm gonna want a protein skim all the time, 24 seven. And I'm also gonna wanna do, you know, one to two water changes per week to make sure that, you know, I'm keeping my nutrient level really, really, really low. So protein skimming is huge. Um, if you're gonna do a protein skimmer, I always recommend getting a larger one than what you need. Because the way that the protein skimmer works and why they're so effective is it's actually pulling nutrients out of the water before it has a chance to break down, causing you know high phosphates and high nitrates. So they're a very invaluable resource to have within your aquarium. 
or excuse me, not invaluable, a valuable resource to have within your aquarium because they're actually gonna be pulling out a lot of this garbage before it has a chance to really cause a problem. So protein skimmers are always gonna be at the top of the list as well as water changes when it comes to maintaining that bio load within your tank. The next thing that's gonna be on the list is just a good filtration system. So this could be a sump, it could be a hang on the back filter, it can be a canister filter, it could be just water changes in general with no running filtration at all besides a protein skimmer. There's lots of different ways to do it and I think it's just going to come down to your budget, uh, knowledge, and kind of really what you want out of your tank and what you have time for. Me personally, I have a canister filter and I know that that's usually a big no-no when it comes to saltwater tanks, but as you guys can see, my tank's doing pretty well. So I, it really just comes down to husbandry. If you're not taking care of your equipment, you're not cleaning out your equipment, it really doesn't matter what kind of filtration system you have. It's always going to fail if you're not taking the time to clean it properly. So just pick a filtration system that works for you. I went with the canister filter because I didn't want to have to deal with a sump and a drilled tank. So, you know, theoretically, a canister filter will do everything that a sump will do. You just have to make sure that you're cleaning out those sponges inside that canister filter, rinsing out and cleaning out the inside of the canister filter, and replacing your media and sponges periodically so that way it doesn't become a nutrient tank. But then again, if you're not changing filter socks and you're not doing sump maintenance, your sump can easily become a nutrient bomb for your tank as well. To be quite honest with you, any type of filtration that's out there, uh, manual mechanical filtration, I mean, not, not a protein skimmer, but anything that's, you know, uh, pushing water through sponges or media or anything like that. If you're not taking care of it and replacing the components on it, they're all going to actually build up nutrients and just do more harm than good. So this is going to come down to a weekly maintenance schedule where you should be cleaning out your sponges or replacing them, cleaning out, replacing your carbon, Fosban, or whatever it is that you're using to help control some of the nutrients that are within the water. Next on the list is actually gonna be chemical things. So I don't want you guys to go out and start putting liquid chemicals into your tank to try to remove and lower nitrates and phosphates. In my experience, they're very unsafe and they can actually cause a lot of issues within your reef tank. Many years ago, I added a liquid chemical that was supposedly reef safe and said that it would lower nitrates. It ended up bombing my tank and I lost a lot of money in coral and fish. So just don't use liquid chemicals to lower nutrients. It's really never a good idea. So when we're talking about additives that we can use to lower nutrients, I'm talking about things like Fosgard, um, you know, whether that's going to be GFO or Fos, uh, there's actually a brand called Fosgard, um, or you can do things, you know, uh, like carbon dosing. Carbon dosing is a really great way to actually lower nutrients and it's very safe. There's a lot of different methods when it comes to carbon dosing. Sometimes people will use, I think it's either vinegar or vodka. In my personal opinion, while I have not tried those, um, they're not for beginners. They're something that can actually be overdosed if you're not careful and it can cause bacteria blooms and a whole other just slew of issues. If you're gonna do carbon dosing, allow me to suggest something to you guys. Let me actually grab it for you so I can show you what it is. So this is a product that actually comes from Tropic Marine. And I believe it's called Reef Active, if I'm saying it correctly. So that's what it looks like, Reef Active. I don't want to readjust the camera, so hopefully you guys can see it, because I've been having some issues with my filter, um, where if I try to zoom in on something else, then the tank just goes completely blue, and it won't readjust. But Reef Active is what it's called, and basically what this stuff is, is it's a powder, and I believe it's derived from seaweed or something of the such. You'd have to read the instructions on it. But it's a natural source of carbon dosing. So what this does is it naturally builds up a particular type of bacteria that will absorb nitrates and phosphates out of the water, thus carbon dosing, thus lowering the nutrients in the water. And then this bacteria becomes available as a food source to your coral. So scientifically speaking, quotation marks, and I'm not a scientist by any means, just some stuff that I've actually watched and read up on, a lot of research has been done on corals and supposedly they have a good method for absorbing nitrates, but not a very good method for absorbing phosphates. So phosphate is something that coral needs to grow, but they don't really need a whole bunch of it. But 
they have a hard time absorbing it from the water themselves. They can do it, just not super effectively. So carbon dosing will actually lower the nutrients in the tank, nitrates and phosphates, and when it binds to that bacteria that's actually lowering the nutrients, that bacteria then becomes a food source for the coral, and that bacteria is full of phosphate. So now the coral actually has a little bit better method of removing phosphate from the water than just doing it on its own. So carbon dosing has a lot of benefits, just make sure you're doing it the right way. Um, I'm not saying that reef active is necessarily the only way or the right way. I'm just saying it's probably the more safer way to go, especially if you're a beginner in the hobby. Um, it'll run you, I think I paid about 30 bucks for it. Um, and it is a two ounce.